All right, let's get some colors going. So for this process, I like to create a silhouette and that's just one solid shape in one tone or color. We're gonna go to the layer with the lines and we're gonna use our auto select tool, also known as the magic wand tool. And we're gonna click on the area outside of the character. And you'll see these dotted lines, also known as marching ants. And that selects all the area outside of the character. And what's really nice about uh, Clip Studio is that even if there are small little gaps, it will catch it and um, not bleed past it. But for the most part, this drawing has a solid outline, so it's not going past. As you can see here, it's actually automatically closing off the line, even though the line isn't a solid closed off area. It's analyzing it and assumes that you would like that area closed and not to go through. And you can mess with the uh, the levels levels of gap closing. That's kind of that's what it's called the gap closing effect. Um, so I have it turned all the way up right here. Also little holes in the character like this this hair area here. I'm gonna hold on shift. That's gonna allow me to add more selections that I've missed. So here's another one. And also you can manually go in and lasso off areas. If you go to your lasso tool, I have mine set to L. You can go in and hold on to shift and you can add sections manually by drawing it in. Holding on option will delete areas. All right, so we have the this selection outside of the character. So what we want to do is we want to inverse this selection. So we want to flip it so that it selects the characters instead of the background. So holding on to command or control shift and then I, you'll get an inverse selection. Now we're going to create another layer underneath the lines and we're going to fill it in with a solid color. And it can be any color for right now. As you can see, it's missing some of the, the little leaves and stuff. That's okay. We can go in and we can manually paint that in just want a solid shape and then we're with our hue selection slider we're going to use command or control u to get the sliders open and we can turn up the brightness so right now we have a, a bluish hue and any color can work but this sets the tone for the colors moving forward so if you want a warmer drawing go with a more orange um, undertone but if you want more of a cooler drawing then go with blue i think i want to go with more of a bluer undertone this feels more like um, in daytime. And if I go towards more cyan-ish color or teal, we kind of get kind of a morning-ish color. I like that. I like that feel. Now we're going to begin filling in our flat colors. So we're going to have separate layers for each color or object of the character. So starting with the skin, we can create all of our layers first. Let's just create a bunch of layers and go through them and label these. This will speed up the process. So without even painting, you can just identify the objects. So I'm just gonna go through and figure out what they are. So we're gonna start off with the skin, sweater. So I like to add the layers as they are on the character by how they're layered on top of each other. So skin, for example, being the bottommost object. Put the pants underneath the jacket, shoes. We can do she bought on its own layer. So working in layers allows us to adjust the colors and tones separately without affecting the other objects. Also a quick way to add layers is using command control shift N. Some objects might have secondary colors, for example, like the jacket's fur. So I'll call that jacket fur and I'll put that underneath the jacket. And then we can add some leaves, leaves. And then also we need eyes, layer for the eyes. Okay, now that we've got all of our layers labeled, let's go in and begin filling in our colors. So right now they can be any color. So here's a really nice little feature um, Clip Pseudo has is the re referring layer. So we're gonna click on the line layer. Let's label it line. And we're gonna click this little object here to set as reference layer. And you'll see this little icon right here appear right next to the layer. We do that because we can start filling in objects without having to be on that layer. So for example, I'm gonna go to my fill tool. We're gonna also select this little icon here. And that's gonna refer to, refer to the, uh, the re reference layer. So when we fill in, we're, we're filling in as if we were on the reference layer. So go into your skin, your paint bucket, add some skin color, see how it goes in. In the old days, you would have to be on the line layer itself in order to fill in the colors. But with that feature turned on, it allows you to fill it in without being on that layer. So, all right, so now we're gonna begin filling in the colors. As you can see, it's leaving little gaps. So what you can do is you can just go in with your pen tool Paint right over those little gaps. So to speed up the filling process, you can click on an area and drag it over the objects. Instead of having to click, 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 it'll begin filling objects as they as they touch that area. 
So I'm just choosing kind of a general skin color um, for now, and I can adjust it for different hues if I wanted to. A little more warmer tone, a little more yellowish tone, but we can do that all in one go once we lay down all of our flat colors. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of the drawing, filling in, filling in all of our flats. So again, you can choose any color for now and we can adjust it later. We just wanna be able to distinguish by their hue, their darkness, their tone, their saturation, something distinguishable. So this area, the object bleeds out because there are holes. Instead of drawing in the lines, going in and fixing those holes with the lines, we can go in and add a little bit of color to the areas where we think there are holes and then fill it in and it should close up that gap. I'm gonna create another layer for a hair clip. So the sweater would be underneath the hair, so I'm just gonna move that down. So a really quick way to get to your colors without actually having to look for the layers is by holding onto Command or Control Shift and just clicking on the area on the canvas and it should hop to your layers. So when you're filling in colors, it will leave small little gaps here and there. So I'm just going in and filling them in manually. And to see them more clearly, you can turn off your lines too. But for the most part, it's pretty unnoticeable. So we can just leave that for later. For objects like these shoes, I have two different tones of brown, but because the colors are very similar and they're like a really bright red or yellow or something like that, I just keep the two colors on the same layer so that even if I were to modify the color, they kind of stay within that, that idea and it still works. So I missed that little part, but I've added in some polka dots, some pink dots, just to get some interest in the painting, some smaller detail, um, keeping things a little bit more interesting. Thinking some uh, some yellow zippers might look cool against green, so I might create some secondary colors. I might create a third layer for just the zippers and metal accents. Just bring in some life so that it doesn't seem too stale. Maybe that one zipper will be good enough. Having too much gold might throw off the schemes, so it's just a small little accent like that. It's nice. Maybe another accent for the uh, collar of the, of the jacket it can be a slightly lighter tone. And I'm doing this right on the, uh, the metal layer because since I can last it off, it'll be fine. So one side of that, we can adjust that color around, see maybe we can find a better color. If not, that green looks fine. Actually, I forgot, you gotta lasso off that area. So just lasso it off, leaving that gold zipper alone and then shifting the color around. Blue's nice, but the hair clip's already blue. This is nice too. I do like this lightish, light yellowish green color. Shoes may be too warm, so I'm gonna desaturate that a bit. And the pants seem seems like the same color blue as the hair clip. So we don't, we don't want things to look too wild. Having them similar colors is fine. Just want them slightly off. So it's slightly greenish blue. All right, so that's pretty much it for adding our flat colors. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some tones and shadows. So we'll pause here for now, but we'll pick it back up in another video. Until then, you can follow me on all the socials at The Jetty Jet Show. Thanks for watching. Keep on drawing. Take care. Peace.